folks, picking up where we left off. Hope you had a great spring break. Uh, this will be our last set of lectures for chapter 12. And I'm going to start us off um, getting into something that I think is really amazing. Um, and that is getting into these uh, allotropes of carbon. Um, and what's you'll see what's amazing about this is there are some wonderful applications for these different types of allotropes of carbon. So what is an allotrope? Um, so that is something that is a structurally different form of the same physical state of an atom. So these are all carbon allotropes. Okay. Hopefully we remember that carbon is not only an atomic solid, um, but because it's a non-metal, it is a network solid. Okay. And so here's our uh, three commonly occurring allotropes. Um, so that is a diamond that you should all be familiar with. And if we were to zoom in and look at the atomic structure of a diamond, we can see here it's got this lovely covalent network. Um, and I'll remind you, each one of these carbon atoms is sp3 hybridized. Um, that might sound somewhat familiar to you, but maybe you forgot what sp3 hybridized means. Um, so all that means, for one, is that it's tetrahedral about each carbon atom. Um, and the atomic orbitals are hybridized. 1s and 3p orbitals are mixed to give you that tetrahedral shape. And up until the discovery of graphene, which is this material over here, graphene, diamond used to be the strongest material known to man. But as it turns out, graphene is now the strongest material known to, to um, humans, I should say. Okay. So now what is this thing in the middle? Well, this is graphite. Okay, and uh, hopefully you all recognize, remember graphite, I, of course I grabbed an unsharpened pencil, but right, um, there, that little slug, that's, you know, we call it pencil lead, but we remember that it's graphite. And this works really well as pencil lead because it flakes off in these sheets. So uh, graphite is rather strong um in each one of these sheets right here but it's really weak in between all of the sheets so those sheets flake off really easily and uh, leave behind residue on your piece of paper well what's really really amazing um, as recent as 2004 scientists figured out how to isolate a single sheet of graphite, which we call graphene. So that's a single layer of graphite. And what I mean by a single layer, it is literally one atom thick. Okay, so uh, this has been noted as a wonder material. And I have another video for you to watch, one that I didn't create, that's going to um, tell you about all of these amazing properties of graphene. And just to share a few of those with you, for one, as I just said, we now recognize this is the strongest material known to humans. It's one atom thick as well. So if you had a big macroscopic sheet of graphene, it would be completely transparent, but it could support a massive amount of weight, which is amazing for a one atom thick material. It's also known as a superconductor, and that's what we're going to be talking about conductors and semiconductors next. Um, not only is graphene a conductor, but it is a superconductor, so it is incredibly efficient at uh, conducting electricity. Um, so I'm going to move past this slide, but please watch that next video that I've got down there. It's a really short and sweet video 
detailing all of these amazing things about graphene. Okay, so I'm just going to keep talking a little bit more about some of those that aren't highlighted in the video that I, um, that I posted for you all. So, um, and really quick, if I just back up here, so we talked about this being sp3. Well, now if we were to look at each one of these atoms, it can be difficult to tell. But like if I pick on that one, it's adopting that trigonal planar geometry, which hopefully you remember is sp2. And so then, of course, each um, carbon in graphene will be sp2. And because it's trigonal planar, that's why it can form this one atom thick layer. So there are several people that have figured out how to use graphene um, in all sorts of cool ways. So one of those is um, the famously known buckyball. So a buckyball more formally known as Buckminster fullerene, which is a C60. So that's, that's the compound formula. It's 60 carbon atoms uh, and it makes like this soccer ball looking thing. Okay. So basically what you have to imagine, this is graphene. So these are all SP2 carbons, but they've been formed into a little ball. And so what is that useful for? Well, as it turns out, graphene is impermeable. Um, so that means you can't pass something through graphene. The buck stops at graphene. Um, so some very smart folks have figured out how to use this as a clathrate. And what a clathrate means is you're able to do some chemical reactions and get this single flat sheet of graphene to form a ball around a molecule of interest. So pictured here is an H2O molecule trapped in a graphene clathrate, or really I should say a, a buckyball clathrate. And what that means now, this water molecule is trapped forever. It's not going anywhere. Um, so why is that useful? Well, instead of putting water in there, if we were to trap pollutants in our buckyballs, that sequesters them, that enables them from getting out into the environment. Um, so there's a lot of folks that are figuring out how to trap methane and other greenhouse gases in these clathrates to keep them from getting up into the atmosphere. That's one really cool example. Another cool example of graphene is making carbon nanotubes. So once again, these are all sp2 hybridized carbon atoms, flat sheet of graphene. Um, some very smart scientists have also figured out how to wrap these up into an actual tube. We call it nanotube um, because these are on the order of 10 to the minus 9 meters. So they're, they're very, very tiny. And so now I talked about how um, this graphene layer is impermeable. So you couldn't get something to go through that dimension. However, you could get something to travel through the tube um, and it won't escape from the tube other than like the entrance and the exit, right? Um, and this is getting great use in seawater desalination. So uh, desalination of seawater. Sorry, my handwriting is awful. You guys knew that. Um, so in other words, this is like a molecular scale filter for seawater. So you can imagine now we've got this salty seawater. The blue molecules here are water and all of these little um, yellow circles represent uh, salt that's in the ocean that, you know, we can't drink. Um, and because this material is a superconductor, you can attach it to this membrane, um, which in effect will be hooked up to some sort of battery where you can pass electrical charge through it. And that electrical charge will allow ions to be repelled. So the ions are repelled from the membrane, but the water molecules can just pass right through like a little filter. Um, so this is very cool. So this is an atomic scale filter. 
Um, okay, so I think, so that's all that I have on um, carbon allotropes, um, but definitely watch that video that I've got below. It's going to blow your mind uh, what we can do with this graphene material. Um, and it might sound like science fiction, but maybe you heard it from me first. I think this graphene is going to turn a lot of the science fiction we st stuff that we see on television and movies into science fact, which is going to be a really exciting time to see that happen.